Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us and I pray that the Lord would bless you even as we would go through his word together today. Today we're still busy in the first book of Samuel and we're also going to be busy in the book of Psalms and we're going to be focusing particularly on chapters 18, 19 and 20 in the book of first Samuel. So let's get straight into it. We see in chapter 18 that Jonathan and David become dear friends and they make a covenant with each other. Jonathan gives to David his robe, his garments, even his bow and sword and girdle. Now this signifies something very special. It signifies that Jonathan was giving over to David all that should be his. Now with Saul being king in Israel, Jonathan would have been the rightful heir to the throne. But now Jonathan is giving all of these things to David, signifying that David would take on that role that was supposed to be Jonathan's or that Jonathan would have had uh, should, he, should Saul have continued in the right way. Well, we, th we can think that in a human sense, but we know that the, the kingship had to come from the line of Judah. It couldn't come before, the line, uh, before David himself because that was 10 generations. So we see then how this is passed on, if I can say it in this way, that the prince would give to the future king all that was his. And then uh, we see that David goes into battle and he follows Saul uh, into battle and things. And then the people start singing praises to David. Saul killed thousands, David killed ten thousands. And the song of David, David's praise infuriates Saul and he envies David and seeks to kill him. So Saul plots to ensnare David by giving him his daughter to wife. But the daughter that David is promised is given to another person. And so David is given Saul's younger daughter, Michelle. And it just so happened that she loved David very much. And so we see that Michelle is then given to David to wife. Then we get to chapter 19 and we see that Jonathan informs David of his father's purpose to kill him. And he goes to his father and persuades Saul not to take David's life. Now, Jonathan loved David. Now, we must remember that this is not a perverse kind of love. This is a love between two best friends, two very dear friends. And uh, so Jonathan makes a plea on David's behalf. And then Saul heeds to this plea of, of Jonathan and he makes a covenant not to kill David. But when David returns from battle after slaying the Philistines, Saul, under the influence of an evil spirit, tries to kill David with a javelin. He's just so overwhelmed with jealousy and with hate for David. So David flees to Samuel, and Saul, in pursuit, seeks out Samuel, and there he prophesies again. Now remember that when God gave Saul a new heart, another heart, which included this gift of prophecy, when Saul had fallen and when Saul had, had uh, gone astray, the Lord didn't remove this gift from Saul. And that's very important for us to understand as well. We see that many people are given gifts, but we see that their, their teaching and their preaching is against the Word of God. We see that their lives don't reflect the Word of God. It's not to say that the gift would be removed from them. No, they, the gift continues with them. It's just that they use it then for their own gain, for their own uh, ego, and in many cases they fall astray having that gift and using that gift for their own benefits. Then we get to chapter 20. And in chapter 20 we see that David consults Jonathan as to why Saul is hardened against him to kill him. And Jonathan vows to inform David of any plot his father plans to use to kill him. There they renew their covenant and they, and they promise that for future generations even, that they would be joined together. But then uh, they make this plan and this plot, and you, you can read, as you go through the reading, just understand what's happening there. It's very descriptive, so, you, so you're not going to get lost there. But we see that Saul, at dinner time on the one day, he see, sees that David is not there. He thinks that David is unclean. Then the next day, David is missing again. And then when he asks Jonathan, where is David? And Jonathan makes an excuse. He, he tries to kill Jonathan there because he, he knows that Jonathan 
is protecting David. And so Jonathan and David meet and then they part ways for the safety of David. It's just heartbreaking, but it's actually really what needed to happen in that regard. So that's the reading from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. Then we're going to get to the book of Psalms and we're doing two chapters in the book of Psalms, namely chapter 11 and chapter 59. And these two songs are songs of praise and prayer for protection of the Almighty God on the righteous. Also for the destruction of the wicked at the hand of the Lord. Now you can imagine David in the state of leaving his best friend Jonathan, leaving his wife that loved him, Michelle, because Saul sought to kill him. And so David prays this prayer, the Lord is a mighty fortress to me. The Lord will protect the righteous. The Lord will avenge the, uh, the wicked. And this is, you can just imagine what's going through his mind and going through his heart as he's writing these songs. Very different context to the way we normally read the Psalms. We normally read the Psalms in such a, you know, just, just uh, without considering what the writer is going through as he's writing these, these songs. But... Thankfully, doing the Bible reading in chronological order, we get to see a lot of the times what the writer is going through as he writes these songs. And so we see David is in a, is in a time where he's uh, running for his life and he is praying for protection and asking for the Lord's help in this regard. And I think that adds so much more depth to these songs. So I pray that you would enjoy it and that you would meditate on these I pray that the reading would be a blessing to you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading today. Chapter 18 And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him, and gave it to David, and his garments, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul had slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold my elder daughter Merab, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And what is my life, or my father's family in Israel, that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time when Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given unto Adriel the Meholathite to wife. And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him, and that the hand of the Philistines may be against him. 
Wherefore Saul said to David, Thou shalt this day be my son-in-law in the one of the twain. And Saul commanded his servants, saying, Commune with David secretly, and say, Behold, the king hath delight in thee, and all his servants love thee. Now therefore be the king's son-in-law. And Saul's servants spake those words in the ears of David, and David said, Seemeth it to you a light thing to be a king's son-in-law, seeing that I am a poor man and lightly esteemed? And the servants of Saul told him, saying, On this manner spake David. And Saul said, Thus shall ye say to David, The king desireth not any dowry, but an hundred foreskins of the Philistines to be avenged of the king's enemies. But Saul thought to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And when his servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law. And the days were not expired. Wherefore David arose and went, he and his men, and slew of the Philistines two hundred men. And David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full tale to the king, that he might be the king's son-in-law. And Saul gave him Michael his daughter to wife. And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. Chapter 19 And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David, and Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee. And what I see, that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee word very good. For he did put his life in his hand, and slew the Philistine, and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood, to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swear, As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed, and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster, and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed, with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michael, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he has escaped? And Michael answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped, and came to Samuel to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and dwelt in Nihil. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Nihil in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Siku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Nioth in Ramah. And he went thither to Nioth in Ramah, 
and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nioth in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore, they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Chapter 20. And David fled from Nioth and Ramah and came and said before Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? And he said unto him, God forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swear moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat. But let me go that I may hide myself in the field, unto the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me, that he might run to Bethlehem his city. For there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, slay me thyself, for why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee. For if I knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it thee? Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, and I then send not unto thee, and show it thee, the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it thee, and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace. And the Lord be with thee, as he hath been with my father. And thou shalt not only while yet I live show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not, but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again, because he loved him. For he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shalt remain by the stone easel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them. Then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way, for the Lord hath sent thee away. And as touching the matter which thou and I have spoken of, behold, the Lord be between thee and me forever. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new moon was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. And the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something hath befallen him. He is not clean, surely he is not clean. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city, and my brother, he hath commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. 
Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger, and did eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David, because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David, and a little lad with him. And he said unto his lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto his lad and said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept one with another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed. And Jonathan went into the city. Psalm 11. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain, for lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Psalm 59. Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold. Thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Selah. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who, say they, doth hear? If thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them, thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee. For God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. And for cursing and lying which they speak, consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Selah. And at evening let them return, and let them make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat, and grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense, and the God of my mercy.